Good evening. Welcome as we begin the season of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. As we celebrate the sacred mysteries, we acknowledge our sin. The prophets foretold your coming. Lord, have mercy. John the Baptist prepared your way. Christ, have mercy. You promised to come again. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant your faithful the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful in you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have come like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. And our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who call upon your name, who rouse himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our, fa our father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Responsorial Psalm. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon the cherubim. Sign forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down upon heaven and sea. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The son of man whom you himself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. May, you help, may your help be with the man in your right hand and the son of man whom you yourself made strong. There will be no more withdrawal from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. 
Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed upon you in Christ Jesus that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, so the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day our Lord Jesus Christ God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a person traveling abroad he leaves home and places servants in charge, each with their own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch the Gospel of the Lord. Were any of you uncomfortable waiting while I was gone for a few seconds? Were you wondering what I was doing? Looking for something? Uh, that was just part of the homily. Uh, I would have done it longer, but we're not supposed to have mass be real long. But the idea of watching and waiting is a big theme of the first week of Advent, so I gave you an extra few seconds of, of waiting, of anticipation. That is what Advent is about. It is a season of watching, as we heard in the Gospel. It is a season of patience and waiting, something that we're not real good at as a nation. It is a season of anticipation. 
We all, well, we regularly say things like, oh, I can't wait for whatever, when we know something good is coming up. Oh, I can't wait for that. But you do need to wait. And when we anticipate something that is worth waiting, good things are worth waiting for. We couldn't sing the opening song tonight, but if you remember the words of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, it's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. That wait from the time that song was written until it happened was about 600 years. The coming of the Messiah was worth waiting for. It was a long wait. The person who wrote that song and the people who listened to it were long gone before it was fulfilled. But eventually, it did happen. So many of the promises in the Old Testament <clears throat> were a long, long, long time before they were fulfilled. <clears throat> Advent is an important season. It begins tonight, and it lasts until the afternoon of December 24th. During these Four weeks, we wait, we watch, we anticipate, we prepare. We pray, prepare ourselves for something really good that's coming. Namely, again, the commemoration of the coming of the Messiah. So Jesus tells a parable tonight about you need to, to be watchful. You don't know when the Lord is coming. It's at whatever time of day, don't know. Okay, same thing goes with our lives. We don't know exactly when we'll meet the Lord. So what he says is, be ready for that. Be on the watch. Don't jump ahead too far. Focus on what you need to do. Make sure that you're ready. Make sure that your wait is worthwhile. That is what Advent reminds us of. The good people of Israel waited a long time for the coming of the Messiah. It was a worthwhile wait. We have a while to wait yet before we celebrate the next season. For now, we're in the color of violet, the color of Advent. Let's use this time to wait, to watch, to prepare, and to anticipate so that we are ready to meet the Lord when he comes in celebration of Christmas, when he comes at the end of our lives, when he comes at the end of time. The first two weeks of Advent especially are a reminder of preparing for that second coming, and reminding us to be ready and to be watchful, prepare ourselves with great anticipation for when we meet the Lord. we profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken from the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we bring these special prayers before God this evening. For the church held close by the shepherd of Israel, that all might be open to receiving God's merciful love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are entrusted with positions of leadership, that they may govern with wisdom, prudence, and compassion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their families, friends, and caregivers, that they know God's healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of the world, that they will be safe, fed, housed, and loved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this worshiping community that we rouse ourselves to cling to God this Advent, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Paul Reiser, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and make what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. To all the angels and saints, we praise you by saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. <clears throat> Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. During Advent, I'll use Eucharistic prayer three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, 
that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, giving you thanks, said it the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Then he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, the first one during Advent, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon, Lord, we pray, look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Walker, our Bishop, the order of bishops and clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Remain seated for the communion prayer. Let us pray. Lord, may these mysteries in which we have participated profit us, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. For Bob Kernan, whose funeral was here this week, eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, let the perpetual light shine upon him. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Hope you have a happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, which I was celebrating today with my family, and we still have our Thanksgiving things up. We'll take those down tonight as we now celebrate Advent for the next four weeks. A reminder that if you picked up a missalette, you bring that home, put your name on it, and use it now for, the rest, for this upcoming year. Uh, if you didn't get one, you can get it next time, but they were, I should have put them in the center, I guess, but they're over on my right on the way back, so do not put them back in where you got them from. They are yours to take home for, to use for the next year. And you notice the tables set up in the back. Those are the Holy Land olive wood projects. You notice the... Uh, Palace. The chalice, the chalice that I used tonight, I got last year um, from the uh, Holy Land olive wood people. So uh, please take a moment to take a look. Uh, there's good presents for graduation, confirmation, first communion, birthdays, other occasions of various religious items. And, I always like to say something about this because I did spend a semester in Israel studying back in the 1980s, and uh, there were a decent number of Christians there, but that number keeps declining every year for reasons that you see on TV, on the news. So I just, uh, this is a way of helping the remaining Christians. So come on up, we'll have one of our uh, representatives to speak to you for a little bit before we're dismissed tonight. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elise, and I'm from Nazareth. And before I start to talk to you all, I would like to thank Father for giving me an opportunity to come up here and speak to you all about our mission. Holy Land Olive Art Mission is recommended by the Archbishop of Jerusalem, and he has written asking for your help on the behalf of the Christians and Catholics in the Holy Land. The, the Catholics and Christians, they once made up 63% of the people in the Holy Land. Now, they are less than 2% of the whole population. The reason why is because they have been driven from the government by policies, curfews, roadblocks, and miserable living conditions that are against the Catholics and Christians in the Middle East. So it's making it uh, very difficult for them to be living there because of those situations. Uh, they are f looking for a more secure life and a sunny income on which they can feed their families. And Holland Catholics, they are known worldwide for the olive oil carvings. They teach their children generation after generation to carve these items because um, people who come and visit, they can, um, they sell to people who visit so they can provide for the families. We brought these carvings to the United States as part of this mission. Science Holy Week Art has helped many Catholics make a living there. The Archbishop of Jerusalem is asking you to consider buying these items to continue the income for local Christians and Catholics to support their families and the homeland. Thank you. And please come and stop by and take a look at these very beautiful artwork and even the smallest items the uh, purchase can still help our families back in Holland. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's very sad that we've gone from 63% of the population to 2% of the population. So this is one way we can help the remaining 2%. Um, it's been a difficult year for them too because of coronavirus, so hopefully we can encourage you to take a look while maintaining some kind of distance. We've got four tables spread out back there. 
The Lord be with you. We pray for the Advent blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's Advent and enrich you with blessings. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may God make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. The celebration of the first Sunday of Advent is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.